um, in this video we are going to continue looking at um, projectile motion so we have question two now which is saying a stone is thrown with the velocity of eight meters per second into the air at an angle of 40 degrees to the horizontal calculate the vertical component of the velocity now before we even read the questions I think it's important for us to know which case are we dealing with. So this is the second case where I said, in question one, I said, you are just on the ground, on the level ground, and then you throw an object, okay? Or you kick the ball, so it goes under projectile. So the moment it lands there, that is a projectile. Now here is a free body diagram here, guys. I'm going to give you a free body diagram. So here is a ball. It goes there, it lands there. So that point here is my maximum height. I'll call that as H max. The horizontal the um the horizontal distance is what we call the range. So remember, it's going to be thrown at an angle, like we have said, the angle is 40 degrees. The initial velocity is 8 meters per second. Once it reaches at the maximum height here, the final velocity is 0. Now we can start solving the questions. So, when we're talking about the vertical component and the, um, uh, the vertical component and also the horizontal component, it's a case where we have, um, in this case, what we have is. Um, we have something like this. So we have the x component and the y component. Here is my 40. And here is my velocity to be what? To be 8 meters per second. So this will be my vx and this will be my vy. And you know that when we're talking about vy, we're talking about the vertical. Vx is horizontal. So we are talking about, we want to find the vertical component. The same things we are talking about under vectors. Vy will be V sine theta. So Vy will be, the V is 8 sine 40. So what is 8 sine 40? That is 5.15, 5.14 meters per second. That is my vertical component of the velocity. Okay, then um, part two is saying state the value of the vertical component of the velocity when the stone reaches its highest point. Ignore the air resistance. The moment you are going to reach at the highest point is the maximum height. You reach at the maximum height, the velocity is zero. So, like I said, when you reach at the maximum height, the velocity is zero. So, the answer there is just zero. The velocity is zero at that point. Okay. Then part 2 is saying use your answer to uh, 1 and 2 to calculate the time the stone takes to reach its maximum height, its, its highest point. Now to find the time at the to reach at the maximum height, one thing we should know guys is we are going to use this formula. V final is equal to the V initial plus GT because I don't have the height. Okay, I don't know the height, so I, I can't use the formula which is going to give me the height because I'm trying to find the time. So once once it reaches at the maximum height, it's zero. So V we are dealing with Y, so it's V sine theta. Now I'm going to put minus because it is going against the gravity. G is now negative. Shift V sine theta to the other side, you have negative V sine theta is equal to negative GT. Divide it by negative G, negative G time that is more like we are finding time from a to b like i said from question one then c if i want to find the time from a to c the time i'm going to find now times two is the time from a to c but up we just find right now we're just trying to find the time from a to b so it will be v is um eight sine theta of which is 5.15 we have already found there okay sine 40 I divide that by 9.8. So T will be equal to negative and negative has gone. So we are talking about 8 sine 40 
the answer is already 5.14 divided by 9.8 so I'm getting my time to be 0 0.52 seconds now this time it is the time it took this for uh, for this trajectory for this stone to reach at the maximum height if I go to part 4, which is saying, calculate the horizontal component of the velocity, it's just a Vx. So Vx is V cos theta. Then Vx is 8 cos 40. So what is my, it's going to be 8 cos 40, which is 6.13 meters per second. That's my Vx. Now, again, the, 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 the next question is saying, use your answer to, um, initially they, they wanted us to find, they're saying, use your answer from 5 to calculate the horizontal distance traveled by the stone. So we're using the answer for part 1, part C, A, B, C, yes. We're using the answer for part 3 and 4. And not this. They were supposed to ask like this. They were supposed to say, use your answer from part 3 and 4 to find the horizontal distance traveled by the stone as it climbs to its highest point. So it's like we are trying to find the maximum height, the, the, the height when it reaches at that point. So I'm finding not the range, not the range, but the maximum point is that point. So that point now, they want us to find the distance from that point to that point. That's all that distance that's what they want us to find so it's basically the same thing where I'm going to say um, the range is equal to Vx times T now time is the same time because this time is the time we, that's why the question is, uh, is specified actually we're using the answer from part, part 3 and 4 so the time we found there is 0 0.5 and the V we have found the Vx is 6.13. So it's just basically to plug in the values. 6.13 times 0 0.52. So the range will be equal to um, 3.19 meters. That will be the range. Now, <clears throat> in a case where the question was find the horizontal distance traveled by the stone as it reaches or as it lands on the ground then I was supposed to use the total time which is from A to C so to find that time is just to, to do times 2 of this time that is the total time so it's the one I was supposed to use here if the question was find the, the horizontal distance traveled by the stone as it lands or as it reaches the ground I hope you are getting the concept there. So I've used 0 0.2 because the question is specified to say we are using the answer for part 3 and 5. Okay? That's the basic idea behind that. Now, the last one here for part for question 2 is saying a stone is thrown horizontally from the top of the vertical cliff and lands 4 seconds later at a distance of 12 meters from the base of the cliff. Ignore the air resistance. Let's first come up with a free body diagram. That, this is case one, where you have got it. From here, you throw an object, it goes there. I expect to have the range, which we have been given in this case. Well, they are saying that the time is 4.0 seconds. Then, at a distance of 12 meters from the base of the cliff. So, it lands there. Okay. So, a stone is thrown vertically from the top of the vertical cliff and lands four seconds later at a distance of that. So, that is my range. That's my range. So, now, we are trying to find, I don't know, the H, that one. So, the question is, calculate the horizontal speed. The horizontal speed is the speed in x-axis. Now that I know the formula for range, remember, I told you that range is given by Vx times t. So, now I have the t and r, which is the range. Range is 12. Make Vx as a subject of formula. That is the horizontal dis uh, v speed. So, Vx will be equal to r divided by t. So, it will be 12 divided by 4 
my vx will be 3 meters per second. The velocity in x direction doesn't change. That is what we need to know. The velocity in x direction doesn't change. It remains the same. Then part 2, calculate the height of the cliff. I told you to say for case 1, when an object is, when you throw an object from here, the object is going to have the, uh, the horizontal speed, which in this case it is 3 meters per second. But the, the vertical speed is 0. The initial vertical speed is 0. So in this case, we are assuming that, the, not, we are not assuming, but that's how it is. The velocity in, in y direction is 0. And I'm trying to find the... Um, I'm trying to find what that should be four seconds. I'm trying to find my my h. So you realize that that formula for displacement is equal to the the v initial plus t plus half g t squared. But the v we are talking about here is the v y. So I need to to be specified. I'll say v y initial times t plus half g t squared. It is coming down, so G is positive. Now, the VY initial is zero, like we said, because you are releasing an object from the rest. So the VY initial is zero. So replace S with H. So S is basically the H we are trying to find here. Okay? So it's now H. I will replace this by zero. So zero times T is just zero plus half GT squared. So it's basically H is equal to half gt squared. Now, I have everything. It's just a matter of me plugging in the values. My h will be equal to half 9.8 as my g. My t is 4, but we square it. So what will be h? So now I have 4 squared times 9.8 times 0 0.5. 1 over 2 is 0 0.5. And I'm getting uh, my answer to be Let's say um, 0 0.5 times 9.8 times 4. Now I square it. Don't forget to, to square 4. So the, the answer I'm getting is 78.4 meters. That is the height of the cliff. That is it for question 2. So now um, we can clearly see here guys that we have made with two questions now for you to access those videos it will be easy for you to access them from our website just register with us at affordable price so you can get in touch with me using this number plus two six zero seven six seven seven two nine nine two seven get in touch with me right now and you'll be able to access the full tutorial sheet solutions and also more practice questions under projector motion because i have advanced practice questions which can help you to understand more on this topic okay so i have all the videos from uh, dimension analysis up to mechanical properties of matter everything both the practice questions and full um, topic videos okay